Hello, everyone. I'm David Madison. I'm the Executive Director of the Southwestern Association of Episcopal Schools, and I'm joined by Mary Catherine Duffy, our Director of Professional Development. Mary Catherine, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Glad you're here. Well, it's a pleasure to see everyone here. We're going to get started in just a moment. A few housekeeping items first. Um, if you have questions for us today, the best way to communicate with us is through the Q&A box. If you'll click on the Q&A box, you can type your questions in there. Um, that's the, the way that you can ask questions of participants. Um, also, if you have a question that you'd like to ask verbally, just let me know through either chat or the Q&A box. I can turn your microphone on. I can turn your camera on if you're feeling particularly brave. I have to warn people of that before I flip that switch sometimes. But um, again, uh, make sure to use the Q&A box. Let's go ahead and start. Um, I mentioned the Q&A box. Let's use the chat for this. If you would type in um, the school that you serve and the role that you serve in. So if you're a head of school, if you're a coach, classroom teacher, just to give the participants a, um, an idea of who all is with us today. If you'll type that into the chat, everyone will be able to see that. Um, the webinar today is being recorded. You'll be able to access a recording of that uh, in our webinar library. So um, you'll need your login credentials for that. If you need access to uh, your login credentials or if you need to recover those, just give Pat Blevins a call in our main office and she'll make sure you have access to webinar library. Make sure to uh, take advantage of all the webinars that we have in the webinar library. Mary Catherine has really, really done a great job this year of uh, putting together some awesome webinars for us and they're all available to you on demand. So make sure to take advantage of that membership benefit. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mary Catherine who will uh, get us started today. Mary Catherine. Well, I'm so glad to have everybody here today. This is going to be a really interesting webinar. We've got Cassidy Lickman. Uh, Cassidy's a former Stanford All-American. She's on the U.S. women's volleyball team, and she's a current board member of USA Volleyball. And um, we're just glad you're here, Cassidy. We're going to turn it over to you and let you um, have at it. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for everyone uh, joining in the middle of your day. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see some slides. We also have here... Um, my father and colleague who works with me in some of this work, Grant Lichtman, he's a longtime educator, uh, has written multiple books and works with schools and, and districts throughout the country um, and sometimes the world. So, you know, a little bit more on my background as I present these slides. Um, like Mary Catherine said, I grew up playing a lot of volleyball. I'm from San Diego and spent most of my childhood in a, in a gym. Um, I went to Stanford uh, where I played for the team there, um, played multiple Final Fours and was an All-American and an academic All-American. And when I graduated, I went on to the US national team um, and played professionally uh, for five years overseas as well. Um, I retired in 2016, went back to Stanford for one season to coach. Um, we won a national championship, which is always fun and then decided I was going to go see what happens in the world outside of gyms. Um, so I'm retired from playing, although I did just play in uh, the newest U U.S. Pro League that was just playing uh, in Dallas called Athletes Unlimited. Um, and I do still sit on the board of USA Volleyball and I chair the uh, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee. Um, but what I want to talk about today is the nonprofit that I run, which is called PATH, which stands for Progress Through Athletics. And you know, when I retired from, from playing in 2016, I came out of the gym in a, in a very tumultuous time in our country, right? And as I looked around and learned more about what was happening in the world, I, I felt like something, something seems to be going wrong. There's some kind of key piece we're missing um, in how we're learning how to deal with each other, how to speak to each other, and kind of our own place in the world. And so I started getting interested in how are we educating kids in those areas better um, so that as they grow up, they're more prepared to enter adulthood and, um, and we can start to solve some of the divides that we're, that we're seeing in our country. And coming from where I came from, I thought that sports was a natural place to start with that, given that sports have always been a driver of cultural change from Jackie Robinson and Billie Jean King to the way that Allen Iverson changed how a generation of kids dressed, right? It's always had that kind of, that kind of cultural influence. Um, and so I, I started thinking about what are the resources and sports that we could be taking better advantage of? The first one being the millions and millions of kids who play or are interested in 
um, or engage in some way with sports. And so when I first started thinking about this, I was at an event with uh, Lisa Borders, who was the president of the WNBA at the time, and Abby Wambach, who's a legendary soccer player. And I left that event thinking, you know, between the three of us, we could call anybody in volleyball or soccer or basketball in the country, and they would at least pick up the phone. And how many kids is that? How much power is that um, to be able to open up that channel? And as I thought about the ability to do that, to speak to all of those kids, the next thing I thought was, okay, well, what would I say? What is the thing that I think these kids need to learn? And so that's where it came to, if we're going to live in a more equitable world, um, a less volatile and divisive world, then we need to find new ways to train skills like empathy and equity and empowerment. Um, and so that's what our content, uh, which we're going to talk about, really tries to tackle. So in the sports world, and also, you know, just as we educate kids in school, so many of your schools, I'm sure, have, the, you know, their mission statements and the values that they want to teach. And so I would assume that a lot of those align with the skills that I was just spot talking about. And so what we're, we're really about is how do we find ways to weave those values and those skills into the day-to-day -day lives and the education of these kids, including within the sports context. And so really thinking about what are the developmental kind of human skills that are, that are important to you in, in teaching these kids um, for their adult lives. And I, I think we all believe, um, you know, I'll take sports as the first example. We all believe that sports teach life skills, but how intentional are we being, being about that? You know, when, when kids are really young, I think we're very intentional about it. We are very specific about how we should treat each other. We tell kids, you need to learn how to share. We teach them, don't hit somebody else. Uh, we give them kind of specific information and feedback about how human interaction can take place and, you know, how they're seeing the world. And then at some point, we think that we have it all figured out. And it seems very clear to me that we don't have it all figured out, especially by the time we're you know, 12, 14, 16 years old. And so as kids get older, how do we keep being intentional about teaching them how we're interacting with other people? And then also how they start to see themselves in the world and how they're empowered in different spaces. Because it wasn't until I think I got to the national team that anybody even talked to me about a skill, the skill of confidence, for example. We had an incredible sports psychologist who worked with us on the national team who really broke down what is what does confidence look like in pressure situations when you're on a big stage um, in, in the skills of it. And I think we need to start teaching kids that younger because it's not when I'm 25 on the national team that I need to learn that. It's when I'm 12 years old and I'm, you know, giving my first speech in front of the classroom or when I'm 18 years old and I'm trying to go to college and meet new friends or when I'm 22 and I'm going into my first job interview. So how do we teach these skills at younger ages? And then not only that, but do they, do they know, do the students know how those things translate outside of maybe the sports context into the rest of their lives? And I was talking to the, the deputy, deputy athletic director at Stanford at one point, and she said, Stanford student athletes often don't feel prepared for their life after college for their next job. And I was like, are you joking? <laughs> Stanford student athletes, who could be better prepared? Um, but because we haven't been explicit about the skills that they're learning through sports um, or the human skills that they're learning as they go throughout their education, because we haven't named those in the same way we name algebra and grammar and biology and all of the other things we learn, they aren't able to articulate what it is that, that, that they're prepared to do in their next phase. And so I think we need to not only be teaching these things, but naming them in ways that, that kids understand what they're learning and the skills that they're getting that are going to transfer over into whatever they're doing next in their lives. So part of the reason we decided to use the sports world is because of the influence that sports have on, on kids and, and adults in our society. We know that there's a big cultural influence here. And as, as charismatic and wonderful as a coach or a teacher or an advisor might be, there's going to be a different impact on a kid when they hear it in the voice of somebody who has succeeded at the level 
that some of these people have succeeded on. So these are some of the ambassadors we have um, in our program right now. So, you know, Steve Kerr, for example, the head coach of the Golden State Warriors, Heinz Ward, who is a Super Bowl MVP, um, Kelsey Plum, who's currently playing in WNBA, Apollo Ono, the most decorated Winter Olympian of all time. And so when the, something comes in their voices, you know, when I walk into a gym and I'm just me, kids will hear something in a certain way when I try to coach them. As soon as they hear sort of the brand names that we listed earlier of Stanford Volleyball and USA Volleyball, they just listen a little bit differently. And that's a difficult thing to capture outside of this context. And one of the, the great examples that we've already seen of this in our work was after um, the events of last summer and, and George Floyd, we launched a campaign specifically in volleyball and softball around um, kind of taking the, all of this all of this fuel that people felt around, you know, being great allies, particularly into predominantly white sports and saying, okay, what are you gonna do now? What's the action you're gonna take? How are you going to educate yourself? Um, how are you going to, you know, support black business in your town, whatever it is, choose an action. Cause that's what we're all about. How do we translate these things into action? And so we made a campaign with Olympians from, from volleyball and then from softball and legendary coaches and put that out there. Cass just blocked up. We may have lost her. We'll hopefully she'll be right back with us. Yeah. If not, um, if she has to log back on again, let me pick up the story uh, for the rest of you. Uh, yeah. So uh, Cass uh, put out this campaign. Uh, literally, it, it appeared about two weeks. Uh, had they were this were fifty nine second video with with just one sentence comments from a number of these great influencer ambassadors. And it was shared and viewed hundreds of thousands of times. And uh, the one story that she came back with, which was just, well, she's coming back on now, I'll let her. Cass, go ahead. I was just about to tell the softball story. I was just saying that, you know, you'd spread this, these 59 second uh, videos out. So go ahead and pick up the story with the softball team. Right, so my favorite response that we got was um, this 12 and under softball team from Oklahoma City. And they decided they were going to wear Black Lives Matter jerseys to the tournament that weekend and posted their picture and, you know, he tagged us and some of the Olympians who had, who had shared, you know, their, their stories and got re responses back from those Olympians and great coaches saying, you know, hey, we see you little sisters, you know, we're with you. And what an incredible experience for those kids to have that interaction um, and that kind of positive feeling around that experience that they that they were able to take action and have somebody recognize that at the same time. So we wanna be able to create those opportunities um, for kids to see what their role models um, are saying and, and their stories and then learn from those um, so that they feel like they're kind of on the same team as the people that they're looking up to. We also think you know coaches aren't always trained or comfortable and advisors and teachers are not always training how people talk, talking about these subjects. And so we wanted to make it th this content available where people can speak authentically to different types of issues. So we designed all of our content with input from um, three student groups across the country, uh, educators and university advisors, some of which I've, I've mentioned already. Um, and it's being used already in, in public and private schools, uh, in sports programs outside of school and college programs. We think it's, it's um, applicable for kids anywhere from probably late elementary, but mostly middle school up through, up through college. And our, the user groups that we've, um, that we've really targeted, our, our end audience is the kids, um, but we know that having educators in the room with them and, and kind of applying the content with them is important. So the key users that we're really targeting are coaches, advisors, classroom teachers, really the educators in their lives who, who are speaking to some of these issues. We know that none of you have a lot of time. You know, you still have to teach algebra and biology and grammar and all of these different things, um, or in the sports context, how to hit or kick the ball. So what we've tried to do is design this to make it as easy as possible um, while still being effective. And so what we're asking people for is, can you give 10 minutes a week? 10 minutes to go through you know, one of these, one of these videos, one of this, these pieces of content 
and discuss it and figure out the action items out of it. So our content is all short form. It's two to four minute videos featuring one of those elite athletes or coaches that we spoke about. And so they frame a message from, from their point of view using their voice and experiences. And then at the end of each video, we give some takeaways, a couple discussion questions that the team or the class or the group of students um, can talk about so that they are really reflecting on the messaging. And then what are a couple action items? What are a couple steps you can take to apply this right now today in class, in your training, um, in your family or community, whatever it may be. And then we know that kids learn through repetition. So we know it's important that this not just be a one-off thing, but you know, again, 10 minutes kind of once a week or once every couple of weeks that you're revisiting these types of messages and checking in on, hey, did you apply the action steps and how did it go? And so this could be, you know, on the bus to an, to an away game. It could be at the beginning or end of class during an advisory session. There's a lot of opportunities to slip in kind of that 10 minute session. So if you were to go to our website, this is a little bit what our video library looks like. Um, we have some playlists that are organized by theme also, like confidence, uh, identity, you know, being a great teammate, approaching success. Um, and so you can you could pick sort of one playlist to to go through for a month, say, with you know five, five, six videos. Or you go through and pick kind of one-off videos depending on the relevance. And I was talking to a coach at the University of San Diego who had a team that was quarantining. And so he used Heinz Ward's video on daily goals to help talk to them about kind of motivating yourself through that, through that period. So you can see, you know, on this page itself, the, the different types of um, issues we're discussing. So, you know, Steve Kerr's strength in numbers is, is mostly about um, selflessness and how working together with the team um, and selflessness and leadership and collaboration really strengthens the team, which, which leads to winning, but also kind of success later in life. Um, Jason Collins and Kelsey Plum are both talking about the issues of being stereotyped um, and how to kind of break out of the boxes that some people put you in. Um, and then, you know, Sue Enquist talks about confidence in, in her video. So again, kind of hitting those main points about how do I see myself in the world and how is kind of the, what is the world putting on me and how do I, how do I um, take that in or not? And then how am I interacting with people around me um, and helping make them better too? Hey, so Cassie, we are going, yeah. Hey Cassie, I just have a quick question. I think it, it just occurs to me as a, you know, some of our schools um, don't have sports programs because they're elementary schools, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's occurring to me, and this may just be a comment, but it may be a question too. It, it doesn't matter if you have a sports program in your school. Because right. kids like sports, even if they're not necessarily super athletic or uh, so I think I can see how this would relate even in a second or third grade classroom um, where if a kid, you know, those kids aren't really in, in sports. Well, they might be in soccer, but, um, you know, they're just not there yet. But I, do you would you agree with that, that that would be relevant to, even to kids in the lower classrooms or in schools that didn't have a sports program? Yeah, I agree. I think there are a few a few concepts that might be a little higher than the youngest kids. Um, and we'll watch one of the videos and you can you can see a little bit more. But I I definitely agree that whether or not kids play are currently playing sports, that it can resonate. Um, mm -hmm. And and partly because sports are part of our overall culture. And so they're still mm -hmm. getting that that influence, but partly because the issues that they're talking about, that these that these athletes and coaches are talking about are human issues. Um, right. And so they they relate to, you know, not only being on the court or the field, but, you know, a lot of other kind of spaces in our lives. Yeah. So we're going to watch, um, and people might have an opinion on, on it after watching this video, but we're going to watch uh, Neka Gwumake, who is um, a former MVP of the WNBA and currently the president of their Players Association, uh, her quick video. Oh, if I have... Sound. Hmm. Can you, you can't hear that, can you? Do you have to, do we need to uh, get her sound for her video? Is there something we need to do on the share screen? Oh, it should be fun. I'll try and refresh really quick. 
Um, so Neka here is talking about, and you can see kind of the discussion questions and ways to practice on the side. Let's see if we can hear it. Can't hear it, Cass. I got no audio here. Yeah, I don't know why. That is strange. You want to try doing it through your screen? You would love yeah, to. Could, could maybe David or, or Mary Kay, could you try to play this if Cass just sends you the link? Yeah. Try pulling it on yours. Yep. Um, I can stop sharing. Um, but you can see on that that website that I was sharing that we have, you know, that it's those discussion questions, those ways to practice on the side, and there's a, a downloadable PDF. Um, like I said before, we're trying to package it as easily as possible um, so that coaches or teachers um, have it all kind of pre made for them, and all they have to do is press play and then, you know, help maybe ask some of those questions. And I might, I might just uh, follow on as David's getting that teed up to Mary uh, Catherine's question. Uh, I do think that these can be used potentially for younger kids if there's a, a, an adult sort of helping to maybe translate some of the comments. I also think that these are powerful for adults as well, uh, for adult right. you know, leadership team, things like that. We're gonna be sitting down here soon with a major corporation uh, and the person who's responsible for uh, the employee experience of 30,000 employees and talk about how these same videos with some very, very small tweaks to the language uh, would be just as uh, applicable to large organizations who are concerned about things like instilling empathy and, and equity in our own, with our own uh, you know, adult right. community. Right. Yeah, I can see that. And I, I can see how uh, I just am thinking about the different kids and how they see the world. And for sure, athletes are in, in, would be great, but this it's helpful to, for anybody, really. Mm -hmm. So let's see. You know what? You, you, I think before you play this, David, if you can pause it for a second. Cass, can you tell David how to optimize uh, for video? Example of understanding that I have. Yeah, I think if you pause that for a second, can you walk David through how to optimize? On yeah, Zoom if you, video? so you'll have to stop screen sharing for a moment. And then when you start screen sharing again, there'll be a little checkbox at the bottom that says optimize for video. Okay, let's try that here. Do, do, do. Where's that down at the bottom, isn't it? It's the bottom left. Yeah. The bottom left. Click that. Optimize for video clip, and then it'll should play yeah. smoothly. Let's try that. Now David's kind of walking up. My black experience as a woman, I have a cultural experience as well. And so that can be a bit of a challenge sometimes. You know, there are Nigerians that feel that I'm not Nigerian enough and there are Americans that might feel that I'm not American enough. And um, what I can say most about all of that is no one is any one thing. And it's important to realize that, especially as you evolve and as you figure out exactly where you fit in into this world and um, just how important what your contribution can be. You don't need to narrow it down to just one thing, but you most certainly can use the things that make you you to celebrate yourself and um, for others to also learn more about your experience. And then with that too, uh, I think it's important for young individuals and young aspirers to understand that just like how you have a story, other people have a story as well. And in the same way um, you want others to hear your story, you, you too have to listen. And I think the world that we live in now too is because 
certain voices were not heard, certain voices were muted. And the, the first way to really fix that is to understand that there are experiences outside of yours. And if you raise that voice who has the least space, then it causes everyone's situation to get better. When it comes to playing sports at a young age, it builds a character in people as, as citizens in society that nurtures that environment that we wish to see everywhere, which is teamwork. What contributes to how I play on the court has a lot to do with the aspect of teamwork. I love playing with people. I love making myself better so that other people can also be better. I love being great so other people can be great. And I think that's, um, that kind of ties into understanding that everybody has a role, everybody has a story. And once that is out there, and once that space is made for each person to, pro to kind of provide their story and contribute their part, then the team can work that much better. Thanks for sharing, David. Um, so I love that video for many reasons. Feel free, you know, to put in the chat if anything that kind of resonated with you there or what you what you heard from NECA. Um, I think I have, my favorite thing out of that video is the term young aspirers, because I think that's just such a great phrase uh, that she uses. But um, one of the things that I love that she does is she talks about, you know, this concept in terms of, you know, herself and like Mary Catherine was saying that in ways that have nothing to do with sports about her, you know, growing up Nigerian American. Um, but then she weaves it kind of back into sports and back into, into life. And so I think um, the ability to do that and hit kids where they're motivated, which is potentially in the sports context, but then translate it out is what we're really, what we're really trying to do. And that concept of, of teamwork kind of working in all spaces is really at the heart of what we're trying to say, which is just what she said around I want to be my best for everyone around me. And I want to help other people be their best and imagine what the culture in our world would be like if everyone was just striving for those two things. You know, Cassidy, something that just jumps out at me too about that is that's sometimes um, when you're in, in athletics, when you're an athlete and you're in, uh, on a team, you know, we're, we're trained to, to, as, as sports in sports to care about our team and to want to beat the other team. Right. So I, I think about the elementary school playground and the times where we would have to say to kids, Hey, I know you play soccer, um, on Saturdays to win, but today we're playing soccer to have fun. And that's such an, a, a, a crazy and okay maybe I'm speaking about my own kid who would crush people mm -hmm. on the playground field but I, I'm just thinking about how I important I know I know um it, that's such an important message and for people who are running elementary schools and middle schools where we're trying to teach these what seemingly are opposite values we want you to play to win. We want you to crush people's heads to the ground, but then we want you to, you know, care and love and have empathy. Um, I like that that your that the video talks a little bit about. I'm on a team, and if I'm my best, I'm making everybody around me better. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, a really important concept that maybe isn't always getting said. And so I just, I think that's really imp imp important information. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, a lot of, a lot of the heart of sports has been lost a little bit in the, the obsession with winning and not mm -hmm. that we don't care about winning. Cause I also love to win. Um, but the things that make us great and make us winners, I don't think have to be in, in conflict with the things that make us great humans. I think they're in concert. And so when I was a national team, we learned that the origin of the word compete is to strive together. You know, if I'm playing my best and my opponent is doing her best, then we're both kind of pushing each other towards our best. And I think mm -hmm. at the highest levels, it's actually usually closer to that. Um, when, you know, when I play professional, professional volleyball, the people on the other side of the court are usually friends of mine. You know, we've played together, together and against each other, you know, for years. And it's the same in the NBA. They're all playing uh, pickup basketball with each other out of season. And so 
Um, I think we've lost that sometimes at the youth levels. And so we're just trying to remind people that these values are embedded in the, the best, the best of the best in their programs too. Um, so that we can remember to, to teach our kids these things as well as let's score a lot of points. Yeah. You, you know, uh, Cass, we're, we're a fairly small group here. And I've noticed in the chat, I think we have a number of people from one school, St. George Episcopal uh, School. I don't know where that school is, but I'd love maybe if, if somebody from the school could unmute and maybe give a little feedback having seen the video. And I, I would sort of have two prompts. One, you know, how might you see this fitting into your existing uh, uh, curricula or messaging that you do at the school uh, around some of these areas, which I'm sure you do. Uh, and then, you know, secondly, perhaps because your Episcopal schools, how does this, how do you see this fitting in with the overall ethos that Episcopal schools try to uh, develop and share with your students? We'd love to, we'd love to get some feedback from y'all on that. So I was able to open up everyone's mic. Now y'all are muted. You'll need to unmute yourself. And then again, if you're brave, you have the ability to turn your camera on as well. But love to hear from, from uh, folks, as, as Grant mentioned, we have a, a, a several folks from St. George and San Antonio. So <clears throat> I'll open it up to see if anyone from that community would like to talk. Hey, David, Rob Devlin here. Um, I don't know that my camera is turned on right now. Um, no, we can't see you, Rob. Okay, that's good. That's probably a better thing for you. <laughs> uh, I don't have an option on my screen to turn on my camera, so. Oh, okay, darn. That, that's fine. But yes, yeah, so when I when I saw the description of this opportunity to visit with you guys and Cass, I love what you're doing. Um, I'm excited about what this is, and and one of the opportunities that was presented to us on our last accreditation visit was to uh, look for ways to. Uh, continue to evolve and improve our advisory program. Uh, and we, we had put together some, some what I think are, are some pretty awesome opportunities in our lower school um, and, and implemented a, a really strong social and emotional learning program for our kiddos to have these kinds of conversations, not necessarily sports specific, uh, but, but all along the same kinds of topics of, of how do we work together? How do we make each other better? Um, you know, how do we understand each other and, and one another's story? And, and how do we, um, of course, then, uh, you know, with the Episcopal tradition, honor and respect the, the dignity of every human being within our community. Um, but then we thought, hey, how can we do this in a way that's going to be engaging and relevant to our middle school students, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders in particular? And uh, so we're, we're playing with lots of different ideas on how we could maybe get that off the ground and recognize, at least in our, our community, that athletics, uh, as well as the fine arts, are two key areas that a ton of our kids really um, connect with. And, and we think that um, the, the possibility of understanding a 10 minute video uh, may be presented in, in the advisory section of our, of our day, uh, hosted by um, a trained uh, teacher, coach, um, where we can have these small group conversations. Um, we really feel like that's an important part. I mean, our, our kids are all super competitive. Um, academically, athletically, artistically, but how do we get them to, how do we make sure that we're doing everything we can to help them to become great human beings? And so, you know, having, having them, uh, you know, Cass, I think you mentioned at one point, um, there, there's some, there's some buy-in when you have the big names listed and they're, they're going to be ready to listen a little bit more. Uh, it's like my own kids, right? They don't want to listen to me, but um, you know, if, if somebody that they respect and admire is willing to give the same advice, then they're going to open up and listen. And I think uh, a program like, like what you've presented uh, would give us some great opportunities to um, really lay the groundwork and have those conversations with our kids. Um, you know, the structure can be formal, but the conversations could be informal around those videos. And the accumulation, the cumulative effect of that over um, you know, entire semester or entire middle school career. Uh, and when we send them off into all the different high schools and colleges that they'll go to, um, you know, I think uh, they'll be more prepared as human beings. And, and that's, that's kind of what our goal is. Exactly. Yes, that's our goal too. Glad we're aligned on that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and Rob, I really appreciate that. And, you know, I, 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 I don't know if Cass will remember to say it's so all... I'll, I'll say in case she forgets this, the, the, the real power here is not only that, yeah, middle school kids aren't going to listen to 
mom and dad, I'm sorry, but especially, you know, telling middle school boys anything is, you know, God bless you all for trying to do it. But uh, uh, this idea that um, we are, uh, we're, we're, we're giving them the repetitions, just like the softball coach or the volleyball coach or the football, you, it's about reps, it's about muscle memory, right? So these small biteable chunks, rather than even having a 10 minute video, your three minute videos, and then let the discussion take over, let the action take over, come back the next week and ask, so uh, how did you, you said you were going to do such and such, tell us about that. Tell us how that worked for you. Tell us what was uncomfortable and comfortable for you. Maybe take a picture of something you did. Bring that back for a discussion. These, you know, this is this is experiential learning, right? This is uh, learning something through experience, not just by being told uh, what to do. And we know it works in athletics. We know it works in the classroom. And I think that's what Cast does a brilliant job of bringing these things into this really short form. They're gonna grab the kids' attention and then let them let them take some action. Well, I could even see using something like this at the beginning of every practice. Um, hey, we're going to watch a three-minute video. Um, you know, basketball is important, uh, but, uh, you know, how we treat each other and, and the kind of leaders that we become is even more important. So we're going to begin every practice with a three-minute video uh, and follow that up with a five-minute conversation. And then there's going to be an action item, and we're going to check back with you at the next practice, and then we're going to go out there, and, and then we're going to compete uh, as a family. I mean, I think there's tons of ways to, to utilize this. It reminds me a lot of uh, the huddles that we had with, with FCA as, as an example. Um, it, it reminds me of, um, you know, what I see my, my fine arts team doing, um, you know, with, with their, uh, their teams, if you will, the teams of performers. Um, so yeah, I, I think there's tons of potential here. Yeah, I think that's almost exactly what it was, what it was designed for is that kind of, you know, quick check-in before practice and then what, what's the action we're going to take out of it? And, you know, what, what we're really trying to get to is, is what's the action I can take in practice today? How, how do I practice this while we're in training? And then how do I practice it when I'm outside of training? So that we, again, start to translate these skills off of the court. Because how often do we talk about, you know, the values of, of leadership or teamwork or all of that within sports? And then we watch kids go into the classroom and not step up and be a leader or not treat the, the kid next to them very well because it's not on their team. So how do we make sure that, you know, as we're going from week to week, we go, hey, you practice this in practice. How did it go when you went to class the next day, when you went with, with your family? Because um, again, like you said, we're trying to prepare them. We know that most of them are not going to become professional athletes. And even if they do, they're also going to be just adults in society. So that's the point that we're really trying to prepare them for. Um, you had, I think, another point that I was going, oh, um, one of the other great ideas that we've heard since you mentioned elementary and middle school and, 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 and over, uh, one of the great ideas we've heard too is, is having the older kids teach the younger kids. So, you know, going through this kind of exercise with the older ones or maybe together and having the older ones um, teach these skills to the younger kids because, you know, you all know that when you teach or coach somebody else, you know, you're learning also. And then there's sort of a sense of responsibility of like, I just taught this thing. I should probably model that behavior because there's an eight-year-old looking at me, you know, watching me do it. Um, so that's a great exercise to potentially do too, is to team kind of uh, advisories up at the, the higher and lower levels. And so that's yeah. such a win-win for everyone involved. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, as you said, when you're modeling, you're learning as well. And it was amazing how um, in, a, in a former life, I was the head of an upper school. And it was amazing when we would create opportunities for the older kids to interact with the younger kids. Um, it was amazing how, how um, the older kids will rise to the occasion. And it's amazing how <laughs> when you remind them that there are lots of small eyes looking at them, it's amazing what they'll do. I mean, it's just breathtaking. So I, I hadn't even thought about the idea of using uh, some of these videos and then having some of the older um, athletes or some of the older students facilitate some of the conversation with the, with the middle school kids or younger kids. I think that would be a really, really strong way to use this material. There's, there's another thing that we're just getting ready to pilot, which you might want to think about. And that is, uh, we have, we have a, there's a school uh, in Arkansas where some of the, this is a high school, but some of the, the students are taking these videos and they are now, they, they, they said, we want to have our voice 
uh, we want to have our voice shared. What do we think about these? And so they're uh, uh, filming themselves either in discussion or one-on-one -on -one or some action and, and going to put together their own short form video. So you could imagine something like you were just talking about, David, where, you know, obviously given permission, you know, maybe make a little video of an eighth grader working with some third graders uh, and showing what that discussion looks like. And then one of the things that we're going to be, that we're going to be piloting and, and trying to take to scale is, okay, so can we create, put, put a part of the platform available to the students so the students own this and they have their voice they, they, these students were telling us very round you know we don't need to be told everything what to do we want to be able to say what we think about this we recognize the power of the video we're hearing but we also want to share what we're thinking but this is brilliant right i mean we're all talking about student voice and choice right okay so let's actually do it for something that is meaningful to, to these kids I love also, I mean, everyone right now is, is really trying to dig deeper into diversity, equity, and inclusion conversations. Yeah. And how do we come up with engaging ways to, to have those difficult conversations, not just with the adults in the room, but with the young people in the room. Um, I mean, just the video we looked at today, wow. That would really open the door to some great conversations about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and we're and we yeah. try to be really intentional about getting a diverse group of voices in our content, so that you hear from the perspective of a lot of different people. Because, like I said, a, a coach or a teacher can only really they can open in the conversation, but can only really authentically speak from their own experience. You know, I I couldn't have made that video that NECA made because I'm not a Nigerian American. I could have put it in a different way, um, but you know, getting to these topics from from different angles, um, because there's there's kids who will hear that who will hear NECA's video, for example, and see it from the perspective that I do, which is, you know, as a white person, and there's kids who are going to see it from the perspective of somebody who comes from a different background. And, um, and so the discussion amongst those different perspectives too, just in the room, I think is really, is really valuable. Well, they're going to see themselves in those speakers. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to see themselves um, depending on who they are. And so I like the representation that you've created where people, you know, little girls that are athletes will see older women, you know, women who are athletes and, um, you know, African-American kids will see their, uh, an African-American athlete talking about that perspective. So I think you're absolutely right. And I, I love that. I think that, and it's much needed. It's much needed. So do we have any other questions? Any other things we want to throw out? While we're issuing kind of a last call for questions, Cass, let's talk about how, how a school can get more involved uh, in this content. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the most important thing is that it's free. So I know that's always kind of the like first free. Topic. Yeah, <laughs> all free content. Um, so the easiest step to start is to go to pathsports.org um, and we can put that in the chat if you want to go there you can subscribe um on there if you want videos just just delivered to your inbox uh, once every couple of weeks um or encourage your advisors or coaches to um and like i said there's playlists there also um we are currently running actually sort of a feedback group with uh coaches and educators from across the country so if anybody is interested in joining that it's very simple it's just you know using over the course of a couple months using three videos with your kids at, at any given time um, and just answering a survey and having the kids answer a survey on the impact and, and how they felt about it just to help us kind of improve the content and see what's valuable and what isn't. Um, so you can feel free to email me about that if you'd like to get involved or if you have you know teachers and coaches who might like to. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really kind of we have everything packaged there for you. And so it's up to the educators and coaches on what they think is most valuable for their programs. But um, you can also email us if you're interested in learning more about that kind of student voice uh, projects. We have some schools from different parts of the country who are you know, potentially interested in collaborating on that. And so we think it'd be great to have different perspectives from a lot of different kids. So I put in um, the chat, the www.pathsports.org. And mm -hmm. uh, then we've also got Cassidy's um, email address. So either of those are ways that the that people can get involved. Yes. Great. 
Yeah. How many times do you get one click and it's free, right? I know. <laughs> Listen, ne- hardly ever. <laughs> I've been, and David knows I was an independent school minister for a lot of years, and I don't think anybody ever called me and said, hey, by the way, one this click. is valuable and it's totally free. And it's yeah. one click on the, the website. Uh, yeah. What a novel, what a novel experience, huh? Yeah. And I don't want to hear anyone complain about, oh, gosh, I, I, I can't find any good material for advisory. Right. You fixed that. You've just taken that problem off the table. Yeah. Well, and we love for St. George School. Obviously, you folks have for this many folks, uh, your school will show up uh, for a webinar. This is great. And, uh, you know, CAS is always available to uh, zoom in with your team and go a little bit more in depth or something like that. If you're interested in brainstorming more about how to use it or getting some advice from her. So, uh, Rob or anybody else can just email CAS and, uh, you know, that's what we're doing right now is just reaching out to folks to try to get them to use it and give us feedback. So we'd love to we'd love to interact with with your school. And for folks who are watching the recording, when we put the recording in the uh, webinar library, we'll put a link to, we'll, we'll put the link as well as Cass's email. But if you're watching on the recording and you need to get a hold of um, Cassidy, just, just email one of us, either email me or email uh, MK, and we'll make sure that the two of y'all connect. But, but we'll go ahead and make sure all that information is in the webinar library as well if you're, if right. you're watching this on demand. I just want to say thanks so much uh, to Grant and to Cass. Um, I'm, I've started an email already, and so uh, I'm going to finish that up after the call and send it your way. But I'm, I'm happy to uh, to help and participate, and look forward to um, you know using a lot of this material um, w- with my team here um, to you know really help kids understand how to be great humans. Yeah, Rob. Uh, so, Cass, uh, for if they want to join the feedback group, uh, all they need to do is subscribe, and then, or we need their email. I, no, just just send me an email. Yep. Yeah. So, if yeah, it, Rob, if you just include Cass on an email, he can she yeah. can send you the these these surveys. Literally take like three or four minutes to fill out. It's not burdensome at all. We'd love to have you guys participate in that feedback. It just started a few days ago, so you'd be right there in the wheelhouse. I think we have, what, 50 or 45 or 50 so uh, groups around the country who are coaches, uh, uh, club coaches, school coaches, et cetera, university participating in this. We'd love to have you guys in on that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, Well Cass, thank you so much. Grant, thank you so much for joining us and very well done participating today. Thanks. It's great to see everybody. I'm going to turn over to Mary Catherine for any closing words that we have. You know, I just think this is such good information. And again, as Grant said, it's free and um, we like free and independent schools. So uh, thank you, Grant and Cassidy and Cassidy, especially you for just what the work that you're doing and uh, it's important and we appreciate you bringing it to uh, our community because um, we're always looking for this kind of information, um, always. So well done. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, you guys have a great afternoon. Have a great day. You Thanks. too. Bye-bye. Bye.